I had a viewer uh, ask me to do a video on crystal filters and uh, it's something I've done in the past and it's very very fun so I thought I'd make a great video. Uh, I think I've shown some of these filters before but I think it was just how did I measure them not how did I design them and uh, what might be the uh, ins and outs of, of, of designing crystal filters. So uh, let, me, let me talk about this one. Uh, we'll show some theory. We'll show some designs and then we'll show some measurements and we'll show some tuning uh, of, the, of the filter. Okay, so, so what, is this, what is this series of filters? Well, I had a Kenwood radio uh, that you could install external filters or additional filters. Um, a lot of radios have those um, and they're in the IF section uh, of the radio. And so the IF section is designed to a particular frequency. So much like a spectrum analyzer, I've shown that like one of my spectrum analyzers down converted everything to 21.4 megahertz. And then there's a very, very fancy filter at 21.4 megahertz and that's the IF filter. And it had crystals in it and it was a, a nice neuroband crystal filter. Um, so radios are the same way. Some radios have like a 10.7 megahertz IF. Some of the old AM radios had a 455 kilohertz IF. There's all different, all different frequencies of IFs depending on the manufacturer of the radio. Well, this particular Kenwood radio had 8.83 .8 megahertz as its um, uh, internal uh, uh, frequency. So I needed to build a filter at 8.8. 83 megahertz. Now you can say, well, why didn't you just go buy one? Well, if you've priced those things out, you know, it's a couple hundred dollars to buy a nice crystal filter. Um, and so it, it's nice to build your own and plus it's fun and entertaining. So let me see if I could build one. So I went to the, uh, so the biggest hurdle and the biggest obstacle to building crystal filters is getting the right frequency. So it's easy to find, you know, a 10 megahertz crystal, um, but there's no IFs at 10 megahertz. So you need to find f f crystals that match your frequency. And that's a very, very rare thing. And you usually fail. Now, if you're designing your own radio, uh, I think one of the very first crystals I built was at, uh, crystal filters I built was at six megahertz. And that's because, I don't know, I, I had a bunch of junk parts once and there was a big bag of six megahertz crystals. So I had like dozens of them. And so I figured, oh, I, I'll just play with them and I'll build a six megahertz fil uh, filter. Now, there was no radio that I could put them in unless I built my own radio. So I could certainly build my own radio, down convert everything to six megahertz, have my own IF at six megahertz. So it'd be, it'd be great for that. But in this particular case, I needed a particular frequency and um, is 8.83. So I went to the junk store, Im imagining that I would not be able to find one. And I found these, they were 8.832. Um, 8.832 and I thought, oh, 002 that boy that's close enough i mean this will make this will make an awesome awesome filter so uh so i bought a bunch of them and um if you've ever bought more than one crystal and uh, put them on an oscillator and then measure the output frequency you'll find that they're all a bit different there's a tolerance for for crystals some are a little bit short some are a little bit long in frequency and so took a bunch of these, I forget how many I bought, about 20 of them or something. And um, I measured a whole bunch of them and uh, ordered them from lowest frequency to highest frequency, okay? And then I said, okay, uh, like this filter requires me to have four, four filters all the same. So I said, okay, uh, here, I measured all of these. And so I know that these, these are all in order. And maybe this one's, a, you know, if you space these out in, in, um, frequency, you know, maybe these, maybe these are almost the same and this one's short and these two are longer. And then you say, okay, well, I could either use these four or I could use these four for my filter. And, and it, you figure out which, which is the best for you. So that's what I did here. I, I, I matched filters, right? Okay. So that's the first thing. So before we go off and talk about theory, let's go put a filter on a analyzer and see what the frequency response looks like. What we're going to do is we're going to input our frequency on one side and look at it at the other side. Now there's several ways to do that. Um, and what I'm going to be showing you is a spectrum analyzer with a tracking generator. All right. So we are going to sweep this filter. 
Um, you could also do it with your nano DNA. Uh, that would do that would do an okay job of this. But we're going to sweep it with uh, the tracking generator and spectrum analyzer, and uh, see what uh, see what these filters measure. All right. So I have uh, the uh, crystal just on clip leads, and it's going through uh, my analyzer, and we get a characteristic crystal. Um, uh, resonance. This is very, very familiar curve if you've ever looked at crystal, uh, crystal data. So there's uh, a peak and then a negative peak. And that's very, very, very common. Um, and, and this one's called the series resonance peak and this one's called the parallel resonance peak. And when we get into the theory, I'll, I'll, I'll show you why those are, those are true. But um, imagine an LC circuit. An LC circuit can be built in series, so there's a capacitor, inductor, or it can be built in parallel where the, ser the uh, um, inductor and capacitor are hooked together in, in a parallel circuit, right? So um, the series resonance happens at one frequency and the um, parallel resonance happens at a different frequency. Now these crystals are marked at 8.832, right? So let's... Uh, uh, go to the peak and it measures at 8.827. Now, 27 is a lot shorter than 32. So you're thinking, oh, well, they must specify it at the, at the, other, uh, at the other value. And so we'll go down in that valley and it's at 8.846. So it's way longer than what's marked on the crystal. So w why is the crystal marked in such a strange way. It's not that peak and it's not that peak, it's something in between. And so if we set the marker to 8.832 will be right there. Okay, so it's right there. So why did they pick that point? Um, you know, I'm not entirely sure how they specify crystals. Um, but what I do know is that when you put them in a circuit to oscillate, you need to find a location along a slope. So if you move in one direction, it goes up, and you move in another direction, it goes down. You need to have a slope. And so crystals have this nice slope built in, right? They have this, they have this line, it's a nice slope. So you would think that maybe halfway Halfway on the slope is a perfect place to specify these crystals. Well, that's at 8.837. So they don't specify it there. They specify it up uh, on the positive side. They don't, go, they don't go to the center. They go up and to some point, some magic point, I don't know what it is. Um, so if anybody knows, please put it in the, in the comment section. But 8.32 is going to be right about there. So why did they specify that point? Like I said, I'm not in Shirley. I'm not in Shirley. Uh, not Shirley. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, can't spit out words today. So if you were just going to use a single filter, a, a single crystal as a filter, here it is. And so it, it has a bandpass, right? So here's its bandpass. And it would make a fine little filter all by itself. It, it, it would be this little point here but it's going to be a little shorter than the uh, crystal is marked. It's going to be here at uh, uh, 8.827. And maybe that's perfectly fine. And in our application, maybe, maybe that frequency is close enough to 8.832 and it'll be just fine. Um, but if you wanted to find crystals for a particular peak, you're going to have to dig harder. You can't just use the outside of the can. So, you know, if there's a, if there is some type of distance here and you want the peak to be to the right, then you'll need to get a, a crystal that's a little bit longer. And like I said, good luck going to a store and trying to find the right crystal. Um, but this one's going to be close enough for us. Okay. So we're going to design with this uh, crystal and uh, let's see how to do that. First, we'll look at a little bit of theory. 
So you can search all over the internet for uh, something called a crystal ladder filter. So what I'm going to show you today are all crystal ladder filters. And they're called a ladder because of what the schematic looks like. Uh, there's supposed to be a schematic in here. Uh, so uh, this is not a great schematic for what I'm going to be talking about, but it's a crystal a, a, a crystal capacitor, crystal capacitor, crystal capacitor, crystal capacitor, and it's like a ladder, right? There's rungs of a ladder, so that, that's why it, that's why it's called that. All right, so uh, this is a great paper. I'll, I'll put a link in it um, in the description. Uh, this is from QEX. QEX is a publication for ham radio nuts, um, and it's very uh, for the kind of the theory side, the uh, more technical side of ham radio, not, not talking on the radio, but actually understanding electronics and uh, building things and stuff. So QEX is great if, if you've never uh, taken a look at it. So um, here's a crystal. Okay, it's always drawn this way. Uh, and it's kind of drawn because there's a slab of quartz in there and two metal connectors and stuff. So it's kind of... Kind of uh, uh, you know, kind of what it looks like. So here is an equivalent circuit of a, a crystal. Uh, there's an inductance and a capacitance, some series resistance, and some parallel resistance. So this is what's a model of a filter. So you can imagine that if uh, you have an inductor and a capacitor, these two can resonate together. There's some series resonance here, right? These are in series. So there's some series resonance here. You also have an inductor with a parallel capacitance, and so there's some place where these two can be in resonance. So what we saw there on the analyzer was the first peak was when these two were in resonance, and that valley was when these two were, these two were in resonance. So this is the series resonance and the parallel resonance. And that's why they're called that, right? And then this paper has the same, the same picture as we just saw. It has a, a, a peak and a valley, right? And, you know, I haven't read this paper very rigid, uh, stringently. What's the right word? I haven't been, I didn't read it very closely. <laughs> Let's try that word. Um, and uh, they may explain why you specify these filters up at this weird place here, but I don't know what it is. Okay. So let's take a look at uh, filter design. And, and um, so these, this guy is designing some IF filter. You know, here's his. His has lots of crystals in it. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight crystals. Um, and so let's, um, let's draw what we're going to be building because it's not exactly this, all right? Let me get a good, a good pen to use. All right, so the most simplistic form of a ladder filter is going to be um, crystal, 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 crystal. So we're going to have four, four crystals, right? And we're just going to wire these up like this. And then we're going to put a capacitor to ground. So capacitor on each node. And then we need to get signal into this thing. So they usually have a capacitor on the input and a capacitor on the output, okay? So this is what we're going to build. Very, very simple. So uh, here's the first one that I built. So it has four crystals, those same frequencies, and it has five capacitors. One, two, three, four, five, and they're all adjustable. Um, so you can go online and you can find a lot of calculators uh, you input the series resonance and the parallel resonance and the series resistance and what frequency you want your uh, filter to be and how many poles and it'll do all the calculations for you and tell you what value of uh, uh, capacitors to use and everything. But um, so you can do that. But we're just going to do it 
the the way that I wanted to do it, which was I want to be able to change these and see what it does, right? So I got these uh, I got these variable capacitors in here. So we'll be able to put this on the uh, on the analyzer and tweak these and see what happens to the uh, see what happens to the waveform. Now I sort of discussed filters in the past where if you have if you have one filter and then you put another filter in series with it and another filter in series with it, they all convolve with one another. They all multiply together and you get one peak that's, that, that's narrower, right? Uh, they just get better and better and better the more you stack up. So um, the uh, bandwidth as we started out, uh, normal, normal crystals like this, we should have then two, two crystals, three crystals, four crystals gets narrower and narrower and narrower. So let's uh, let's go put this on the analyzer and take a look at it. Okay, here we have the uh, here we have the filter hooked up to some BNCs, and uh, there we go. There's our filter. Let me uh, change the exposure a bit here. I think that's better. Okay, um, so um, you can see that the crystal filter is much narrower than the uh, individual crystal was and um, it has a very sharp uh, sharp sides and a little bit of ripple on the top and uh, so I'm going to zoom the camera in so we can see that uh, see this picture a lot better when we do the uh, when we do the tweaking let me change lenses so I think that's better uh, let's see if we can zoom in on this a little bit right so let's go to main uh, center frequency oh, let's leave the center frequency because the center frequency is actually where we want the filter to be designed it's set at 8.832 and you can see that we're a little bit to the left of it um, and that's just because of the uh, uh, when we bought the filters we thought they were a little bit to the right but that peak is a little bit to the left so you know that got me that got me in trouble Okay, so let's go to span. Let's change the span. Zoom in a bit. Let's change the span again. Uh, just a little bit more. Okay, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. All right, can you see that? Let me look on the camera. Yep. All right, so you can see that we have a... Um, a bandpass filter and there's one, two, three, four little peaks. Why do you think that is? Well, we have one, two, three, four little crystals. And we have um, a series resistance that is cumulative as it goes through. And we have capacitance, which is a cumulative kind of as it goes through the filter. And so each crystal is gonna be a little bit different in frequency because of those sh kind of those phase shifts i guess um anyway uh this is the typical t typically what you see is these is these little peaks here right um i don't know if it's much to do about the actual frequencies of the crystals if these are the individual frequencies of the crystals and if we had just perfect crystals they would all line up on one frequency or not i'm not quite sure of that i think there's some other things going on as well, but uh, it could be that maybe a perfect perfect crystals would all be on the same one. You know, I really don't, I really don't know. Maybe somebody can answer that question. But I do know that um, I'm able to adjust my capacitors. So let's let's adjust them. Okay. So let's first adjust the input capacitor. Now I don't expect this to do much. So uh oh, I'm I'm touching the uh, I'm touching the thing and it's going and it's going wacky uh so well make a liar out of me look at that i'm adjusting the uh the input capacitor and look at what it's doing uh i can make it i'll make i can make it go way way off to one side so there you go it shows that that capacitor alone can move that peak all right, so we're gonna move that peak up to where its neighbors are. Okay, so we kind of want to be there. Okay, now I'm gonna adjust the output capacitor. These are those two series capacitors, remember. These are not the 
capacitors to ground. These are just the input feed and the output feed. So this is the output resistor, uh, the output capacitor. And look at that. Ooh, it does the same exact thing. That's interesting. That's interesting. So that's what the, that's what those end capacitors do. And uh, now we only have three peaks. That's kind of interesting. So let me adjust the other one again. I'm going to adjust the, the input capacitor. And eh. what, we're, what we're aiming for, oops, sorry. But what we're um, wanting a flat top and a narrow top. So, okay, so I'm going to adjust the next capacitor in. So this is the first capacitor to ground. Okay, so, all right, now look at that. Ooh, that's interesting. So, like, if I go way to one side, it goes over there, and then I go, I'm, keep, I'm going clockwise, 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 and it goes back again. So, it's kind of uh, peaking it, right? So I'm going to say, okay, I kind of like it right there. Now I'm going to go to the next one. This is the capacitor right in the center. And what's that one doing? Oh, interesting. Oh, there's our fourth peak again. So I'm going counterclockwise, counterclockwise, clockwise, counterclockwise, counterclockwise, counterclockwise counterclockwise and then it goes back again so the, again there is a there's a, a peak value right here in the middle okay so I kind of like it right there and I'm going to go to the next one and the next one kind of does the same thing interesting so there you go that's kind of about as good as we get um, so what did we learn? Well, we learned that uh, all the capacitors do something and they all seem to affect things on the right hand side, which is really, really interesting. I didn't expect that at all. Uh, it's been a long time since I played with this. Um, and so we can, we can really fine tune these. A lot of times you're really interested in as narrow as you can on the top. And sometimes you're interested as maybe as a, a middle point. Uh, so it's up to you of how you want to design your filter, whether the very tippy top is more important or the bottom is more important. A lot of times they're specified as the 3 dB point, and we've got 10 dB, 10 dB per division. So, you know, uh, it all depends. It all depends, you know. All right, before we go away from this, um, this is the perfect tool for, be do for doing this. If you try to do this on a nano VNA, you're not gonna get as pretty of a picture, I don't think. Um, if you try to do it with a noise source and a spectrum analyzer, it's way too slow and you're not, and it's, it's not as fine, a fine a detail as this either. So, I think the nano VNA is going to be your best, um, and so let's uh, let's go put this on the nano VNA and see let's see what kind of picture we get on that. Okay, let's uh, go to display. Let's turn this off. Let's turn this off. Let's turn this on. And so this is S two one. And we want to set the um, frequencies to center of 8.832 megahertz. And we want to do a span of 30 kilohertz. Oh, there we go. Actually does give you a nice picture. And so this is pretty close to what we're seeing. I think we finally went to a span of 20 kilohertz. And yeah, there we go. So let's, uh, let's tweak these again. We should get the same 
we should get the same response. It's already got the screwdriver in these little slots. There we go. And so I'm turning counterclockwise, counterclockwise. There we go, same thing, whoa. So it's not quite as responsive. It's a little bit slower in its uptick. But I think if you just take your time and be more patient, I have little patience. Um, so there we go. So uh, this is a great tool. Um, like I said, if you try this with a spectrum analyzer without a tracking generator, uh, you will fail. It's not gonna be very pretty. Um, if you do have a, a tracking generator, um, then uh, you will be able to get a nice, uh, a nice picture like, like I showed. And uh, that's basically what the S21 parameter is doing. It's outputting on one channel and measuring on the other channel. So yeah, there we go. All right, so let's go one step further. All right, so the final step will be to measure these capacitors, try to figure out what values to use and try to find those values at the store. Um, so that's, that's uh, something that you'll need to do. But then the final thing is the form factor. Um, you will need to build the device in a size where you can actually insert it into the radio. So this was about the maximum size that the radio could handle. And if you actually go buy a uh, filter from Kenwood, it's about this size. It's not too different. Um, so there's a, an input and a ground pin and an input and a ground pin. And so uh, this is ready to plug into the board. In fact, this was in, the, in my radio for, for, for some time. I, I finally eventually found a cheap enough uh, commercial one that I, that I swapped it out. But I, I did have this in the radio for some time. And uh, this is using... Um, 100 picofarads on the inputs and 180 picofarads on the three capacitors in the middle. So that's what it ended up, that's what it ended up being. And um, because the uh, filter was a little bit low in frequency, um, I had to move my IF over. So on some radios, you actually have a knob on the front of the radio that allows you to shift the IF. I forget what, usually, what radios call it. It's a, it's a shift knob. Um, and you're able to take your center IF and you're able to move that, that IF uh, around. Um, it helps you tune out interference and stuff. But um, with this filter in there, then I needed to shift my IF over to the left a little bit to get it to go through this filter. Um, but it did, it did work quite well. Um, I don't remember. Um, well, this is a 20 kilohertz, so it's measuring about um, 20, 10, 5, 4, 4 kilohertz. No. How many kilohertz wide? <laughs> you would think we could use our measurement tools here. Um, but if we change the span to 10 so I can do the math easier, 10 kilohertz. So you can see this is a full 10, 10 kilohertz span. So that's about a third of it. So maybe three kilohertz, something like that. Um, yeah, there you go. So like I said, that's the final step is to make sure your form factor is correct. So I'll conclude by saying I'm no expert in this. I may have said some wrong things, uh, certainly didn't give you all the information, but um, this is my experience. This is my journey. Uh, this is what I did. It ended up in a filter that worked in a radio. It, and so uh, the little knowledge that I had let me put together something that I could actually use.